my dear friends welcome to this episode the sacraments in streams of grace i am sure you have been enjoying this and these days when you participate in the holy eucharistic celebration and divine liturgy you might experience that heavenly liturgy right here on the earth yes even today as i was participating in the holy mass i was remembering that i am participating in the heavenly liturgy which is being celebrated in heaven eternally which is being present here through the sacrament and that gave me such a beautiful experience and a powerful experience of the holy ghost so in the last episode we have been thinking about the celebration the sacramental celebration of this paschal mystery has got four aspects first is who celebrate the liturgy second is how is the liturgy celebrated and third when is the liturgy celebrated and fourth where is the liturgy celebrated and in the last episode we learned about who celebrate the liturgy in that as a last part of it the the president or the presiding priest he is an icon of christ the members do not all have the same function paragraph 1142 certain members are called by god in and through the church to a special service of the community these servants are chosen and consecrated by the sacraments of holy orders by which the holy spirit enables them to act in the person of christ the head of the service of all members of the church the ordained minister is as it were an icon of christ the priest since it is in the eucharist the sacrament of the church is made fully visible it is in his presiding at the eucharist that the bishop's ministry is most evident as well as in communion with him the ministry of the priest and deacons so it is important who celebrates in fact christ himself is the celebrant but in our earthly liturgy the christ is in the person of priest the ordained priest so only an ordained priest can celebrate the liturgy so the bishop is the presiding minister church is made fully visible it is in his presiding at the eucharist that the bishop's ministry is most evident as well as in communion with him the ministry of priest and deacons so now all the faithful are associated with this minister and to participate in the liturgical celebration their own different roles like singing or praying or interceding reading bible all this is also participants that we the faithful will participate so it is a big community experience but the presiding person is a bishop or the priest who is ordained so that is how the celeb- who celebrates now we understand how is the liturgy celebrated who how where and when in the celebration there are many signs and symbols are used so this is in different right there are different signs and symbols are used in the holy catholic church there are 21 rites 21 rites 
a very major right is the Latin right. In India we have three rights, Latin rights, Siro Malabar right, Siro Malangara right. And uh, the same Christ, the same salvation mystery, the same Holy Spirit is working, the same seven events of the life of Christ is reenacted, but in a beautifully different ways. Very, very different ways. So, my dear friends, when we have to, when we join or when we celebrate the liturgy, it is important how we celebrate the liturgy. In the liturgy, there are many signs and symbols. And it is important to know the meaning of these signs and symbols. Like, mainly you can see the altar and the priest and his vestments and on the altar, the candles, the turable and in the, in the sanctuary there are many pictures and holy statues. All these are important which speaks he speaks a, a great thing which cannot be described through words or through any other way. So signs and symbols are a part of the celebration, how the celebration takes place. A sacramental celebration is woven from signs and symbols. It is knit together by signs and symbols. In keeping with the divine pedagogy of salvation, their meaning is rooted in the work of creation and in human culture, specified by the events of the old covenant and fully revealed in the person and work of Christ. So these signs and symbols have meaning right from the old covenant fulfilling in Christ, like Lamb of God. Lamb is a very important sign and symbol. But in the Old Testament, when the Lord God told them to sacrifice a lamb and put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost of the Israelite families, they did it. But at that time, they never knew this is actually an anticipatory experience of the Lamb of God, Christ, who is going to be the eternal sacrifice. So, this Lamb of God is a very important sign. So, when we use that sign and symbol, when we see that sign and symbol, when the word is spoken, a person who believes must know what it means and what it is connecting to us. So, in the liturgy, we are now going to learn more about the signs and symbols for an effective and a participation in the liturgy. Signs of a human world. In human life, signs and symbols occupy an important place. As a being, at once, body and spirit, Man expresses and perceives spiritual realities through physical signs and symbols. As a social being, man needs signs and symbols to communicate with others. Through languages, gestures and actions, the same holds true for his relationship with God. So God who is invisible speaks through human languages and perceptible signs, perceptible, which is perceptible to human minds, justice. 1147. God speaks to man yeah, through the visible creation. The invisible God speaks to man through the visible creation. The material cosmos is so presented to man's intelligence that he can read through traces of its creator. Light and darkness, a very important sign. 
wind and fire, water and earth, the tree and its fruit speak of God and symbolizes both his greatness and his nearness. The wheat which is planted. So why we offer the bread made out of wheat? Wheat is a very important symbol and sign. So we pray during the offer tree, O oh Lord, accept this offering. This is the work of human hands and the blessing of God. It's very interesting to understand, imagine, the wheat was in one of the guinea bag was in your room, in a storeroom. As long as in your storeroom, it never sprout, it never grow. It is there. But the moment you take few seeds of wheat and plant it in the earth, that is the work of human hands. You dig the earth and plant this seed. And there you go. In three days time, this wheat will sprout out. Who is working there? God takes over. The moment a seed of wheat is planted in the soil with the human work. Then the work is handed over to God. The man do not do anything. The one who plant, sleep and take rest. While God work. God works to produce, to sprout. That is the work of God. Human a human being cannot make the seed to sprout and make a leaf. No, it is not possible. But it is only possible by God. It is the work of God. So, this is in the liturgy a very important sign. So, whenever we use each item like water, a drop of water is added in the wine. The wine symbolizes the divinity, divine, God's infinite, eternal divine nature. And the drop of water symbolizes man's human nature. Human nature, the whole humanity, tarnished with the original sin. That is like a drop of water. And this drop of water is a sign. And when this drop of water is poured into the wine, this water mingled with the wine, mingled with the divinity. The human nature is mingled with the divine nature. Now the human nature is divinized. It is divinized. So that is the symbolic of the grace. Grace is the participation of divine nature into human nature, transforming the human nature to divine nature. So every every time in the in the liturgy you will find many signs and symbols like the priest washing his hands in the water and then wiping it with the white cloth. It is not to clean his hand, it is a sign of the sanctification Christ is doing through the sacrament. The priest standing as an icon of Christ who has come to sanctify the whole world. And that's why before Jesus offered the sacrifice in the last supper, in the last supper, he removed his outer garment and put a linen on around him. And he knelt down at the feet of the apostles, the sign. He humbled himself like a slave. It is a sign in the custom of the Israelites. In the Jewish custom, every time anybody come home, a slave is appointed to wash their feet, to clean them. Any time a person come in from outside, he must clean his feet by washing. So for that, slaves are appointed. And Jesus took that culture 
Jewish custom and culture as a sign of sanctification and even that slave itself become a sign in the person Christ. That's why St. Paul say, although he was God, he never considered to be like God, but lowered himself like a slave. And even he lowered himself to die on the cross. So, like a slave, he tied a linen on his waist and sat down at the feet of the apostles and began to wash. Now, all these are signs. He's taking the linen and tying on his waist is a sign to depict that he lowered himself and become like a slave. Because it is the slaves who put this linen on their time. And then he knelt down at the feet of the apostles. Like a slave washing the feet of the master. He washed with water. They big thing that the Lord God has come to sanctify. To sanctify the whole humanity. So that exactly is reenacted in the Eucharistic celebration through the sign of washing the hand by the apostles, by the priests. It is not simply, so because we don't have time, we, we do it all fast. But even when we do it fast, if we know this symbol, what it means, in a fraction of seconds, you understand the meaning of that, yes. Often, even now, I go to the altar and minister the priest. The Lord himself tell me, go, it is your duty to minister. And as a lay person, that is the only one thing I can do at the altar of the Lord. So, most of the time when I am participating, wherever in a place like in my church or in a retreat center where I conduct the retreat, when the celebration takes place, I will be sitting in front and at the moment of the time of washing the hands, I go and assist the priest to prepare the grief, to take the water and give, to take the wine and give and, uh, and to offer to wash his hands. At that time, I am doing this with all this thinking. And the Lord himself guide me. You go, you go. It is you who are privileged. And I go there, I offer to wash. At that time, I believe in all this <laughs> preparation of the gifts. When, the, when I take the bread and give to the priest, he offer it. Now, at this moment, I remember... This bread is a sign. This wheat is a great sign. It is the work of human hands and the work of God. And after that, this wheat is crushed, ground, and made a paste and made this bread. All this has... And why this unleavened bread is offered in the Eucharist? It is a sign <laughs> Right from, coming from Genesis and also from, from, yeah, Genesis and the book of Exodus. In Genesis chapter, chapter 14, chapter 14, verse 18. Milkitzadeh, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. See, Milchizedek is the high priest and eternal priest. In his order, Christ also became a priest of eternity. Milchizedek told Abram, after returning after his victory to offer a thanksgiving sacrifice, by saying this, he took bread and wine. Blessed be Abram, by God most high, the creator of heaven and earth. And blessed be God most high who delivered your vows into your hands. 
This is the same prayer we are doing. See, it is continuing from Genesis, from the time of Abraham, from Melchizedek, the sign of bread and wine. Often, sometimes during the inculturation in India, somebody suggested, why can't we use milk in place of wine? But it never happened. Many people suggested. But that is not possible because it is a sign which has great relevant with the salvation history. So, why the wine and bread? Now, wine and bread is a sign which is following right from Genesis chapter 14, verse 18, when Melchizedek offered the sacrifice in to thank God for the victory of Abraham, he took bread and wine and of food and said, Blessed be God. Blessed be God most high, the creator of heaven and earth. And blessed be God most high, who delivered your vows into your hands. The same prayer almost we pray even now. So it is a sign. And why this bread is like this unleavened bread is used, it is a sign that when Israelites were told to go from the Egypt, when Pharaoh said, today is your day of, you can now go all. And Moses told all Israelites, all Israelites will sacrifice a lamb and pour that blood upon your doorpost and everybody make unleavened bread. Unleavened bread is important because if they make a usual leavened bread, it will take the whole night for the, for that flavor to, flavor to be leavened and only next day they can make the bread. But by the time Pharaoh's mind may change. Therefore, the Lord told them, don't wait for the leavened bread. Come on, hurry up, move. And everybody make unleavened bread and don't sit and eat, stand and fast. And this unleavened bread and the blood on the doorpost is a symbol even now because that is what a prefiguration of the Old Covenant and many Old Testament prophecies related to Eucharist. My dear friends, let us pray. Let us thank God when we celebrate the Eucharist here in after. Let us remember, I will continue in the next episode more about the signs. But signs... Understanding of the signs will make the Eucharistic celebration really meaningful, really meaningful. Every moment in the Eucharist a sign is used. Oh, Heavenly Father, help us to understand the meaning of the signs and help us to relate it to the whole salvation history coming from the Old Testament. The sacrifice, the altar, the bread, the wine, the blood, the lamb. Oh, Holy Spirit, help us to sink the spiritual, spiritual mystery behind each symbol associated with the salvation history and salvation mystery. Salvation history and salvation mystery is explained to us through many signs and symbols. Oh, Holy Spirit, help us. Help us to understand. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us, melt us, mold us, and you Jesus. Amen.